A couple of weeks ago, we devoted uh, much of the programme to Scotland's new deposit return scheme. It's an ambitious new recycling project that's going to be rolled out in August, we're told. In simple terms, you're going to pay an extra 20p on most bottles, whether they're plastic or glass, and on all cans containing drinks. You get that back when you recycle those bottles or cans at specific points. But as we heard when we explored this issue, there is a lot of concern out there about the way the scheme has been set up. And there are calls from business groups and from the UK government, indeed, to put the whole thing on hold. Old. Drinks producers have to sign up to the scheme this week. If they don't, uh, they may not be able to sell their products in Scotland after the summer. Well, let's speak to Dougal Sharp now. He is the founder of Innocent Gun Brewery. Morning to you, Dougal. Right. Um, are you going to sign? You've got till Tuesday night to decide. Well, it's like a devil's choice. Uh, you're damned if you do and you're damned if you don't. Um, there are real risks with signing up. Um, but, of course, there are real risks if I don't sign up, so it's a very difficult position to be in. What are the risks? What are you weighing up? Let's look at signing up first. What is the jeopardy there? Well, to sign up allows us to trade in Scotland um, beyond the, the implementation date of the 16th of August. Uh, however, it also opens up to risk if uh, the scheme doesn't go live or if it only partially goes live, uh, the administrator can reach into our bank account and take out significant sums of money. Um, and we think that's a real risk to business. Only because you're making a lot of money. That doesn't apply to small producers. Well, no, I think the, the point here is that there are lots and lots of different sizes of companies and almost all of them in the scenario where the scheme doesn't launch will end up paying towards the, the costs of this scheme. So uh, I, I, don't, uh, I don't think that that's right. No. right. What about the other side of this devil's bargain then, not signing up? What's the jeopardy there? We can't sell anything in Scotland. And what would that do to your business? We'd cripple it. You know, anyone that doesn't sign up faces that choice, and I think there is, uh, I think that's an unfair choice for, uh, for any company to face. Um, and, and when you consider, if you take a step back from this and consider the, the, the huge risks that the whole scheme is placing on, on consumers through massive inflated costs, huge changes in behaviour and complexity, uh, and then, of course, for businesses, the significant costs and risks associated with the scheme. Uh, we, we are urging uh, an immediate pause and a rethink of this whole thing. Do you, do you have any idea what you're going to do? Um, there are still a lot of questions that are unanswered um, by the scheme administrator. Uh, and, and, you know, it's kind of going down to the wire as to what we're going to do. Right. Um, well, we're we're going to speak to Lorna Slater in just a minute. She will inevitably say, you're a polluter. You make these vessels, these units, that contribute to the litter problem and to the pollution problem, and we've got to put the future of the planet first, so you've got to pay for this. She's not wrong there, is she? Well, I think it's, it's not unreasonable for us to have produced things. Um, everything that we make is in recycled and recyclable materials. Um, I believe that um, most consumers, when they've used those products, want to do the right thing with the, with the waste. Uh, and recycle it. But they're not doing enough of that at the moment, so this is just an incentive to do it, and you've got to pick up the tab for that. Yeah, but I think the point here is that there are plenty of schemes, in, well, even in the UK, for example, in Wales, they have a curbside system for glass um, that doesn't, doesn't require any of these absurd policies uh, being implemented. And this, this scheme in Wales is already recovering over 90% without any of the shocks and risks to consumers. Are they not uh, talking the about their own the return scheme, though, in Wales? They are, but nonetheless, as it happens today, they've got a scheme which, cut, which picks up and recycles over 90% of the glass in the system. And my view is that we could be doing that. You know, if we invested in recycling properly, uh, if we had the right infrastructure in place, if we educated the consumer, as to why it's important, I think we could get to 90% on glass and 90% on everything else the easy way rather than DRS, which appears to me and almost everyone else in business and an industry, the DRS is the hard way. Uh, what's the impact going to be, do you think, briefly, for the consumer? Huge price shock. I mean, you look at a four-pack of lager, it's going to go up somewhere between £1.60 and £2.00. Um, so you're, you're five pounds up to, you know, close to seven pounds. It's a huge, huge inflationary price pressure. The other thing is that they've got, then got to keep those cans intact. They can't crush them. They've got to take them back to a recycling centre, probably in a supermarket car park, where they will be going anyway, but they've got to then feed those cans into a machine. Now, there's obvious risks in that. What happens if you've crushed the can? What happens if there's a huge queue? 
you know, um, because th this is money that the consumer will need back. You know, budgets are squeezed. We all know how, how much pressure the consumer is under currently uh, in terms of household budget. This is putting more pressure on and bringing with it huge obligations on the consumer. Right, well, the deadline fast approaches for you. You have some decision-making to do. We'll let you go and wrestle with, uh, with all of that, Dougal. Thank you very much indeed Thank for you. being with us this morning. Dougal Sharp there from Innocent Gun. Well, let's hear now from the Scottish Government on this. Lorna Slater is the co-leader of the Scottish Greens and the Minister in charge of the Deposit Return Scheme. Good morning to you. Good morning. Uh, I bring bad news this morning, uh, Lorna Slater. Humza Youssef has just been on um, Laura Koonsberg's programme saying small operators, if he, if he becomes the next First Minister, small operators won't take part in this scheme for the first year. Kate Forbes is on the front page of um, the Mail on Sunday this morning saying she's going to bin the scheme and if the line had held up for long enough with Ash Regan, I think she would have told me, as she's told other people, she would pause it too. This isn't going ahead in its original incarnation, is it? Oh, it's definitely going ahead. So Hamza Youssef was really clear that he absolutely supports the scheme and industry investment is such that we have great momentum building toward the August 16th launch. Industry have invested tens of millions, in some cases hundreds of millions of pounds toward the scheme. We're recruiting people. Uh, businesses have applied for, uh, you know, planning permission to put in their re reverse vending machines. That's those automated return points where you return your cans and bottles. This system is absolutely going ahead. What Hamza Yusa mentioned is the current ask on the table from small producers is for a grace period to uh, help them join the scheme at a time that's right for them for the very smallest producers. And that is something that I have been discussing and considering very closely because we're listening very closely to the needs of those Well, you say producers. you're listening. This has been going on for years and years. They've got to sign up by Tuesday. Some of them have signed up already and suddenly now you come in and say, all right, you get a buy for a year. It doesn't look terribly well coordinated, does it? We've worked really closely with the small producers. So the legislation for this was passed back in 2020 and businesses have known they've got, you know, they needed to come on board and get ready to deliver this scheme for Scotland. I did give them a one year uh, delay last year to help them recover from COVID. Industry has invested tens of millions in this and we are going ahead. Okay. We're working just, just, closely just... with small producers and we just last week announced a package of measures that will significantly help them. £22 million okay. of cash flow support as well as answers to their labelling problems. Okay, but, but they, just, 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 just answer this now. Are you saying on this programme this morning that you are going to pause this for a year for small producers? That is absolutely something we are actively considering. I've met with small producers twice in the last They're going to sign this thing by Tuesday. The... the there are two different things in line here. One is signing up with the scheme administrator and the deadline for that is Tuesday. And I would encourage all businesses who are affected by the scheme to contact Circularity Scotland and find out what they need to do to get registered with Circularity Scotland by Tuesday. But that is the registration process by which they participate in the scheme. In terms of actively getting their product on the shelf and making sure the labeling is right and so forth, we will then work with small producers going forward to bring them into the scheme in a pragmatic way that works for them. So that's two different different deadlines. So you're saying that you're dealing really closely with these people and it's, you know, it's, it's quite a progressive dialogue. We've spoken to somebody who, who acts on behalf of all of the small brewers. They were in the meeting on Thursday night, five days before they absolutely had to make this huge decision for the future of their company. And they described the meeting as a car crash. They said they weren't listened to. A load of money was put on the table right at the 11th hour. They weren't listened to. They're still confused and they need more time. So we had met with small producers about two weeks ago where they had presented their concerns to us and we've put this package for them exactly to address those concerns. 22 million pounds of cash flow, some clear solutions on labeling. We met again uh, last week and the, the ask on the table from them is for a grace period for small producers to get on the table. So we are absolutely working at each stage with businesses to, to deliver this scheme. This scheme is so important for how we reach net zero in Scotland. It's so important for how we clean up our parks, get that broken glass off of our streets. And I know businesses are committed to making it work, as am I. Okay. That is why we're absolutely listening to small producers just, and just, taking their concerns Just answer me this. Who's, who is a small producer? Because this, for, for a company waiting to sign, to sign for this, and we've spoken to many of them in the recent past, this could be a decision between continuing in business or effectively going out of business. They want to know what defines a small producer. Who's going to be let off this for a year? That is exactly the kind of questions that we need to have a conversation about. For every business producer but, but, and retailer... But again, we're 48 hours from the deadline. 
they, these businesses need to contact Circularity Scotland and have that one-on-one -on -one conversation about what's right for them. Every business in Scotland is slightly different and has different needs. And Circularity Scotland is very keen to speak to those businesses who haven't yet had that conversation and find out what they need to do. And I absolutely encourage them to do that. Circularity Scotland will be able to help them through that. Um, businesses, yet yeah, the deadline is Tuesday. SEPA can also help support businesses with their registration okay. and they can talk to SEPA about how they can comply with this. Scheme. Okay. Um, will you still be in government to see this through? And by that question, I, I, I'm kind of nudging towards Kate Forbes' views on a range of issues. Um, Ash Regan has spoken about the environment. She wants to scrap our net zero plans. She's got similar views to Kate Forbes on what should happen with gender recognition reform. Could you work with either of them as First Minister? I mean, the selection of the leader of the SNP is absolutely 100% a, 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 a matter for the members of the Scottish National Party. The Scottish Greens are absolutely committed to doing what we need to do to tackle the climate emergency. We are committed to equalities, and we will continue to work for those yeah, things. So, so, so whoever they select, of course, is a matter for them, and it's a matter for their membership. But it's a matter for you to decide whether you want to stay within the current agreement that you have. Could you sit and break bread at a cabinet table with a first minister who doesn't believe in gender recognition reform and, in the case of Ash Regan, doesn't believe in our climate targets? We sit at the table because of the policies inside the Butte House Agreement. And those policies are absolutely about tackling the climate crisis. Gender recognition reform is baked into the Butte House Agreement. So that is the basis upon which we sit at the table. Mm. But my question still stands. Could you sit and, and have dialogue with the First Minister who has spoken, as Kate Forbes has done, on some of our social, issue, uh, social beliefs? I mean, the Scottish government at the moment is absolutely committed to, to the matters on the table, to reaching net zero, to tackling child poverty. And these are policies we can all get behind. I absolutely okay. expect that any all new right. First Minister would be fully committed to these policies as well. Let me just say, you, you made an address to Parliament this week about the deposit return scheme. And I have to say, kind of uh, metaphorically, certainly, and almost, and literally, you looked pretty isolated. There was nobody sitting within 20 metres of you. Do, do you feel like you're being hung out to dry on this? I absolutely do not. Deposit return is a well-established uh, way of increasing recycling and helping move the cost of dealing these, with these materials away from the taxpayer, away from our burdened local authorities onto the producers, which I think is fair and right. These work really, really well in other countries. I've been speaking to co co uh, colleagues in Germany, and they are saying, you know, when it was first introduced there, it was, you know, it was a bit like the smoking ban here in, in the sense that there was a lot of worry about it, a lot of noise about it in the media, but actually many, many years on, but, but everybody loves it but, and it works really well. But, yeah, this but is it's, a different, well it's different here, isn't it? It's, it's different here, Lorna Slater, because it would be like Bavaria implementing its own scheme and creating a completely different market just for Bavaria compared to the rest of Germany. That's where the complications are. Let me ask you this. No, have you, I, asked, that, that have you asked the UK government for an exemption to the Internal Markets Act on this? On your, on your point about the regional deposit return schemes, there is lots of precedent for this as well. Not all deposit return schemes are national schemes. Okay. And there are many schemes around the world that are regional schemes. We aren't breaking any new ground here. We're doing, a, we're doing exactly what other schemes around the are, world are Very briefly, because we're coming to the end of the programme, are you getting an exemption on the Internal Market Markets Act, because Alistair Jack said last week you weren't, and leading uh, legal minds have said it might be illegal if you don't manage to get that exemption. That, that's, not, that's not true. It is, ab our regulations are absolutely legal. The enforcement of the deposit return scheme does require an exclusion to the Internal Markets Act. We've known that. We've known that for months, and that's something we've been working through. It's, are you getting there's that? A, there's a process for this. If we, you haven't signed similar... up your agreement with the UK government yet, why do you expect producers to sign up in two days' time to, the, to, the, to this deal that could put their companies out of business? The, the, internal, the process for granting an exclusion to the Internal Markets Act is very well known and understood. We went through the exact same process last year with the ban on some of the most problematic single-use plastic. It's something I've spoken about with Therese Coffey, the Minister for the Environment. It's absolutely, it's, it's something that's in process right now. So that, that's definitely moving ahead. All right. Lorna Slater, many thanks indeed. We will be speaking about this more than once, I would imagine, in uh, the months between now and August when it comes into effect. Thanks very much indeed for being us, with us this Sunday. And thanks to you all.